we continue with the lamp of non-dual reality the disciple asked the master what does exist then the master answered there exists only the beginningless endless non-dual never bound ever free pure aware single supreme bliss knowledge these words are really key pointers the words are pointing to the direct experience so when the direct experience is happened when the mind comes out the indirect knowledge or the direct knowledge of the words and the direct experience merge to be one there is clarity for the mind what was the experience although it was absent we go and see that the only thing that exists is that which is beginningless endless that's what the, the master points means it has it doesn't begin nor end so anything that appears and disappears which are thoughts any sensation that begins and end cannot be that which is always exists the non-dual he, he continued, it says, never bound, means it's ever free, means your true nature, who you truly are, is not bound by any thought, word, bodily sensation, feelings, energy, it's always free, means the, the mind will discriminate what's not always free pure which points that every thought is a stain on the field of awareness which is absolutely still and pure so it, it's you remove the stains and what remains is the purity aware this is also the closest to the direct experience aware it's not aware of something is aware because awareness is aware of itself only so it's only aware single supreme bliss knowledge now we continue the disciple if so Tell me how this mighty massive delusion of samsara veils me in dense darkness like a mass of clouds in the rainy season. Here the disciple asks him, Okay, how is it possible that who I am is beginningless endless, it is non-dual, it is pure, it is aware, it is not bound, ever free, how is it that it is um, veiled and he says how the delusion the massive delusion of birth and death birth and death is basically identification with the body the story of the past and the projection of the future how this delusion believing the past to be real believing the future to be real uh, veils veils me veils who I am in, de in dense darkness like a mass of clouds in the rainy season how is it possible? so the master ans answer what can be said the power of this illusion? Maya as a man mistakes a post for a man so you also you mistake the non-dual perfect self for an individual let's see what he's pointing he he basically answer how is this delusion happens he's pointing on the power of illusion mistaking something for something else 
This is the power of illusion. I mistake the mirage to be water when in fact there is only earth. I mistake here as a man mistake a post for a man. So the metaphor is I mistake something for something else. I see a man and when I get closer I see it's a post. I see a snake and as I get closer I see it's a rope. Okay? So another example that is common I walk down the street and then I see a friend that I haven't seen for a long time and as I get closer it's somebody else. So I mistake that somebody else to be my friend. So here I mistake the non-dual reality to be an individual entity that identifies with the physical body. Or I mistake the non-dual reality for a physical form. This is from the mind perspective. Yes. That the mind is confusing. Although I am the pure, as pure awareness does not affect by it. So, still, this knowledge came to clear. So, I, I'm not sure I understand how the the identification with the with the mind as for the yearning for liberation is have any how it matters. If I am the absolute awareness that doesn't affect and untouchable, how come the the because mistaking something for something else is in the mind. It's nothing to do with awareness. So when I the mind is clear, I see the rope. When the mind is clear, I see the post, and I don't mistake it for a man, a person. I see a rope, I don't mistake it for a snake. I see the earth, I don't mistake it for a mirage, water there. I see the other per the foreign person, I don't mistake it to be my friend. That's what happens for the, when the mind is clear. So the knowledge knowledge is a clear mind the clear mind can undo the veiling and projection that that's what he talks about superimposition that is made from and then when the mind is clear the source can shine through the non-dual reality shine through because the clouds is not there for who for for the mind right i am awareness unaffected what why is it matter to me that the mind is cloud and why is the experiences of the cloud uh, of the mind and not of the Be awareness because the me is moved it it is mistaken to be an individual entity i and me that believes that it is a physical body so that's what happens, what moved is I am awareness and there is a thought I and the reflection moved to that I. So it's like awareness forgot itself. That's what apparently appears, is that the reflection moved and then it forgot itself. When in fact the mind veils awareness to be experienced through a physical form. So it's almost bringing awareness into the objects of the world by removing what obstructs it. What obstructs it to experience it in a physical form is the identification with the thoughts. Maybe that's what gives the answer for the question. Is who cares? Awareness is always aware of itself. It never identified with anything other than itself. Yet the, the body is born due to ignorance and identification as an 
I am an individual entity. Now the body is born and the identification with the body is to, for one thing, is to undo this identification and then when the undoing of this identification with the body, awareness can be experienced, experienced through a physical form. To the mind. To itself. To itself, it doesn't need the mind to experience. That's it. right. It doesn't even need the body. Or the mind to experience itself. Awareness doesn't need the mind. That's to right. Experience. That's right. Yet, because the mind is identified with the body, so when there is no identification with the body, awareness can be experienced through a body, without identification with the body. <clears throat> and this is not for awareness. It's this, by the mind. This is no. This is actually for the mind, not to keep a, a continue with the cycle of birth and death. That's all. It's not for awareness. It means the undoing is not for the mind to keep being in ignorance and continue the cycle of birth and death. So how come the experience is by the is from the individual point and not how come I don't see the mind as something external? I see it as something that is me. And I, as as awareness I should be able to see the mind and the body no, or the whole thing. Awareness thing. cannot see anything other than itself. Right. Because okay. Because there's awareness, this whole phenomena exists within the awareness, right? Yes. And th there is a, a sense of separation that it, it seems like it's me, it's, it's appear like it's me, and I say me and I can point to the body and and the identification is like me, although this whole phenomena have nothing to do with me as awareness, and the identification me, is just you, no. You mean it's what it's I mixed. hear is mixing, yeah, mind and awareness. Right. They don't mix. Although I am the awareness, I am not the mind. That's right. So. So what is the who, who identifying, th this mind identifying, and the, the I thought seems to be awareness because the I thought identifying no. with awareness, with no. the reflection of consciousness. No, it just, it, it identifies with the reflection of con consciousness because it is in contact with it. I don't understand what what you're saying. So, if you clarify what you want to say, I want to, I want to understand what. How come the how come if if the doubt is if I am pure awareness? You are. Yes, not, I am. Not the one who's thinking it. Right. Exactly. So. The one who is thinking it, which being observed, right? No, it's not being observed. Okay. The the, the mind, uh, the the body is speaking, and something perceived the talking and the thoughts. No, the you, mind is when, perceiving no, the thoughts. No, when you when you talk, you don't see the thoughts. The thoughts are just expressed verbally. And what perceives the body is always the mind. And what perceives the thought is the mind itself. I see. So, I see. Okay. I see. Because everything looks like it's um, continuous. This is the why it look like it's a one thing. But actually, you're pointing of separate of discriminate. This has nothing to do with 
the the talk has nothing to do with the mind and has nothing to do with it's just all bubbling up. This is what you're pointing. No, I, I don't understand. It's I don't know what you understand. It's not clear. Okay. I don't understand. I I heard. I pointed. What I saw. What you see, I don't understand. And if you don't show me what you see. If I cannot see, I don't really know what you what you're pointing at. This is also what when the master when he sees something, it has to come and guide the mind how it comes to this conclusion. Otherwise, it's not clear, which is another way. There is no right and wrong way. Some sages or wise says, you already that, and that's it. They don't explain or break it down. Some says, you already that, and you just misidentify, and let me show you the way to undo the misidentification and rest as that. So the master point to the mind, to show the mind the way back to the source, yeah. to the awareness. It, to the that's the only, yeah. the only thing is the, that which is going through the journey is the mind, not awareness. Right. I, as a, I, awareness, does not perceive it and has nothing to do with the, 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 process that the mind is doing back to to me yes the question is it seems like I perceive the process of the mind this is how it it's appears like it's, it's the mind it's the identification with the mind the mind is a process because it is a change Even the process is just imaginary. And even what the mind perceives, it just compares to the past, which creates the illusion of continuity. And then it says, I am in process. The mind perceive the process of the mind going back to it, to the soul. No, it just imagines it. Okay. So why don't we just let the mind play as long as it wants? It plays anyhow, except that out of habit it goes out and it veils the source from itself. For it, it veils it the mind goes out as it goes out it creates a veiling as it gets veiling it projects it gets confused by its own veiling and projection so now it is lost in the, the in the illusion and get deluded it is, is the source it no it is looking the way back to the source so now it has to have the clarity so it stop being confused that it created itself, the mind created the confusion and got confused by its own creation. This is where Ramana is pointing, the mind created a maze and got lost in the maze that it created itself. So now the, it's all for the mind because the only entity that is confused and misidentifies the mind is not awareness. So the mind has to remove or get the clarity so it can the veiling and the projections are removed and then it can move back and rest into awareness and this is where the journey through the physical form is is not for awareness to experience and some say it's like awareness wants a physical form to experience itself this is nonsense this is just a story
the mind says awareness doesn't have desire it doesn't need anything yet the mind needs the physical form in order to return back to awareness and that's basically liberation it's not awareness experiencing itself it's the mind returning to awareness this is why once the mind is discriminating itself and start to rest in awareness the main thing is abiding in awareness and who is abiding in awareness the mind this is how it dissolves back and all the habits and latencies don't spring out to create and get lost in the dream that it created itself so if we go back and we start it has nothing to do with awareness mm -hmm. awareness didn't forget itself although there's some places they talk it's like awareness forgot itself they just it's a play of word it's not true just to realize that awareness can experience itself through a physical form that's all yet it doesn't really matter because what matters is the mind returning and resting in awareness that's what matters the mind stop identifying with the thoughts like they are the truth like they are existence itself that's all and this is why he points for the mind what exists what is the existence so the mind can fix the attention on that to rest in, a, in awareness when the mind is resting in awareness there are no thoughts or there are thoughts but there are no, no thoughts there are no thoughts there are no thoughts when the mind is resting there are no thoughts now the question for the mind ah so now the mind would think i am supposed to be thoughtless no what happens when the misidentification uh, misidentification dissolve then the thoughts appear yet the experience is only of awareness the mind is not confused anymore it does not identify with the thoughts nor believing the thoughts to be real anymore because the experience is of the reality the mind doesn't identify with the thoughts of the course. mind is a thought of yes except the clear mind doesn't identify with the thoughts that's why the mind is divided to sattvic is sattvic, tamasic and rajasic clear mind the mind that aspects of the mind a mode that veils and the mode of the mind that projects this is why as we move for, forward in the book he explained what is superimposition and it is made from veiling and projection this is what ignorance is made from ignorance which is the forgetfulness is part of the mind and the clear mind doesn't have ignorance so it has no forgetfulness therefore it knows and remember the source itself in the clear mind there is still perceive perceiver and uh, perception if the thoughts are perceived yes except there's no identification there and the, the because the, it's a clear clear sky so the sun is shining so the source shines through so the experience is of who you are with a clear mind still the doubt is how come the from the experience of the, the, the uh, wrong identification it, it sounds like i am the uh, the mind the clear mind or the 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 mind that is veil, veiling the source mind is not personal right clear mind is not an individual clear mind is a is a mechanism is a mode there is only one mind 
Clear mind doesn't claim to be me, I, individual. I is the veiling, me is projection. Clear mind doesn't have that claiming. Still it's thoughts, yet no identification there. No sense of I? No, okay. because it's not an individual. Individual only because I superimpose the I on a physical form. Let's continue. So the disciple asked him, If so, tell me. How this mighty massive delusion of samsara, birth and death, veils me in dense darkness like a mass of clouds in the rainy season. The Master, what can be said, said of the power of this illusion, Maya, as a man mistakes a post for a man, so also you mistake the non-dual perfect self for an individual. Being deluded, you are miserable. Okay? Yes? So basically it's mistaking. Who is mistaking? The mind is mistaking pure awareness or the real I for an I that is apparently appears an individual being because it is superimposed on a physical form. The confusion and ignorance is only in the mind. It's nothing to do with awareness. So the whole work and the liberation is liberating the mind from this false identification. And, get, and, and then the mind can rest in awareness. Because as long as the mind, if the mind doesn't rest in awareness and still misidentify with thoughts, it gets attached to, attached to thoughts and it is restless. The reason it looks so close and intimate with the thoughts is because of vasanas or because of just... How, how come it looks so intimate, the thoughts look so intimate? Intimate is just identification. Identification means it's identical to me. It's identical to I. So the thoughts are intimate to me because I think they are part of me. It's my thoughts. My thoughts is similar, identical to I. They are just an extension. So just like an object that I think is mine, I'm intimate with that. That's the intimacy that happens with the thoughts. Yet, thoughts are not intimate at all. The only thing that is intimate is what's the closest, which is you, to yourself. Awareness is the closest, is closer to the breath, then the breath is closer than a thought. It's so close because it's not separate from you. He continues, being deluded, you're miserable. But how does this illusion arise, he asks. Like a dream in sleep, this false samsara appears in the illusion of ignorance, which is itself unreal, hence your mistake. Here he points, being deluded, you're miserable. Misery is only because of delusion, not because of the illusion. Mm -hmm. Means, illusion and delusion, delusion is a belief. Only because the mind believes the, the thoughts to be real, there is misery and suffering. When the mind stops believing the thoughts to be real, the mind is an illusion, yet there is no suffering. And that's the distinction that the mind 
when he's confused doesn't really understand. That's a clear mind? That's a clear mind. So again, I ask for a clear mind that abides in the source. Has thoughts but does not have the identification with them or doesn't no, have a thoughts? A clear again? mind doesn't abide. Ah. A clear mind, the source reflects through it. When the mind rests in the source, there is not even a clear mind. So when the mind, when the mind is, is appearing and is in motion and it's only clear, then the experience is of the self, the source. And when the mind, yet that doesn't mean the mind abides in the source, in that moment. Yet there's no misidentification means there's no aspect of the mind that identify with the thoughts and believe them to be real means there's no suffering that means the mind is free is not projecting past future not identifying no fear so a liberated person that still have there is no liberated person there is a liberated mind. mind. Like the mind is the tool to liberate itself. That's right. So when it's not clear, it get in ignorance, get confused, and get into delusion. Now it suffers. Yeah. Although it's all imaginary, so the suffering is imaginary. Now the mind is start to be exposed to knowledge. Knowledge is clarity. This clarity starts to liberate the mind from the delusion. It gets him out of this delusion that is ident misidentified. And the more it's out of the delusion, less misidentification, more clarity, then the mind is being freer. Can you go back to the delusion to see it again? Where is the delusion? Delusion is believing the thoughts, the thoughts to be real. real. Okay. Means the illusion is Maya. It's the I thought. This I thought creates an illusion. The moment there is a forgetfulness of this illusion, instantaneously there is a belief that this illusion is real. There is a meaning to this illusion now. And now the mind is deluded and it finds all the excuses why to sustain it and why it cannot be without it. So that's how it gets attached to the delusion, to so the belief. This is delusion because it's in the mind, yes. just in the mind. But both illusion and delusion is in the mind, yet the illusion is free mm. of delusion. The moment there is delusion, the deluded mind is actually mm, sustaining the illusion and the delusion. Because the moment I am attached to a belief, I would bring more ideas and excuses, which yes. is thoughts. To make, it, to make it real. Yeah, to make it more appearing to be real. The thoughts never are real. Something that is unreal can never become real. It just appears to be more real. And when the mind is deluded, it cannot see it. So it is believing it to be real. Still, it doesn't make it real. It can't. There is no other option. It has to be real. The, the, the delusion. Yeah, there is no, there is no reality in delusion. There is no snake whatsoever. There is only a rope. It just projected on the snake, on the rope. The mind project the snake on the rope, and it is believing the projection to be so real that for it, the mind, there is only a snake, no rope. He explained to him, it's like a dream in sleep. 
means you are asleep and that's where that when the mind is asleep it dreams and then this this ignorance begins this is why you have to wake up from the dream because if you sleep you identify and you believe the thoughts to be real when you wake up from the dream you realize that what you thought to be real is totally unreal still is of the mind right waking up from the dream from the dreaming state to the waking state the understanding that it was just a dream and nothing of that happened is in the mind nothing to do with awareness Now he asked him, the disciple, what is the ignorance? So the master answered, listen, in the body appears a phantom, the eye conceit, to claim the body for itself, and it is called jiva, ego. This jiva always outward bent, taking the world to be real, and himself to be the doer and experiencer of pleasures and pains, desirous of this and that, undiscriminating, not once remembering his true nature, nor inquiring who am I, what is this world, is by wandering in the samsara, birth, death, without knowing himself, such forgetfulness of the self is ignorance. Let's begin this, this uh, part. It's 21-24. The disciple asks, what is ignorance? And now he breaks and explains what is ignorance, the master. It says, in the body appears a phantom. means something that is not real. It's called I. It claims this I that is not real claims the body for itself. Means this I says I am the body. And this is called ego. This is how the ego is developed. Although the soul goes into the form and now it appears to be inside the form. Now that I, that ego is developed when the body is born and says I am the body so it means I claim the body to be me this ego is always outward bent it's always going out through the five senses this is why it believes the body is his it's his now it's going it's always out bent me that that means ignorance is going out ignorance cannot realize the source because it's always in the direction going out and the only way in to realize who you are for the mind to come back and rest in the source is in is not out so it it's pointing because he explained to him what is ignorance. So this ignorance is an illusion, it's an I. It appears in the body, it claims the body for itself, and this is called ego. This ego is always outward, outward bent, going out through the five senses, taking the world to be real. Yeah, because when you go out through the senses you perceive the external world and himself to be the doer and experiencer of pleasure and pain this I when it's going out it says I am I am doing the actions means because I am the physical body so I'm moving the hands I'm moving the legs Yes, I'm moving the mouth. This is what a baby does. Ah, ah, start to make noises. It's looking, it's all going out. Yeah, now 
it is believing that it is doing the actions because it is the body is his and now it's experience through the senses pleasure pleasant sensation and unpleasant sensation pleasure and pain and now he continues desire of this and that what does he desire good sensation and it avoids Un, uh, unpleasant sensation now he continues undiscriminating not once remembering his true nature means the ego does not discriminate internally it might discriminate between pleasure and pain I want this I don't want that yet it doesn't really discriminate the thought itself it cannot it has to have a higher intelligence or the clear mind that discriminates the ego higher mind lower mind yes so the ego undiscriminating not once remembering his true nature means ego cannot remember who you truly are then what remembers who you truly are is the higher mind because the higher mind or the clear mind it is closer to the reflection of the light because it is actually has the way back the ego is lost in the illusion so it doesn't know the way back because it's always going out out is never the way back so only the clear mind which is knowledge it remembers the true nature of who I am and it is going back yeah. and he continues nor, nor inquiring who am I he never really asked who am I what is this world it doesn't really examine what is this world means the world is perceived in the mind is what is this mind is the mind real is the mind who I am where is the thoughts arise from yeah and without that thought who am I is but wandering in the birth and death in samsara means because it's going out it's always wanting 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 means continue uh, the illusion of continuity into the future without knowing himself yeah because the ego cannot know know who you are such forgetfulness of the self is ignorance basically that's what he says everything that the master described is ignorance and now he will even open and break it apart even more so the disciples say all this, the scriptures proclaim that this birth and death is the handwork, handiwork of Maya. But you say it is of ignorance. How are the two statements to be reconciled? So he says in the scriptures they say that all this ignorance is Maya. And you say it's ignorance. What can you clarify and the master answer this ignorance is called by different names such as Maya eh, Pradhana Avyatka the unmanifest Avidya nature darkness and so so on therefore the samsara is but the result of ignorance he says ignorance has different name names maya forgetfulness 
darkness yet they're just different names pointing to the same state of mind yes and he has to continue and break down what is really ignorance so the disciple relentlessly asked how does this ignorance project this birth and death and the master ignorance has two aspects veiling and projection so now he breaks what ignorance is he was breaking it in the other parts now he's just ex elaborating because what happens sometimes in this different scriptures they bring a short version and not the elaboration and if the mind is not exposed to what being elaborated it doesn't see or understand if it sees it internally he would be able to understand if he doesn't it can see so it doesn't reveal necessarily from within <clears throat> ignorance has two aspects veiling and projection means we can see that it's made from two veiling and projection one leads to another and not vice versa means veiling is the cause projection is the effect always veiling is primary projection is secondary therefore when there is projection is always due to veiling something covers so projections would be future means that I don't see that there is no past if I don't see there is no past I believe there is a future when I see there is no past I recognize there is no future both are just imaginary what the mind sees that both are just imaginary means he doesn't believe that there is a past or doesn't believe that there is a future and that's the difference and that's what the mind failed to understand it doesn't mean the mind cannot think about the future yet it sees it doesn't really exist it's empty yet the mind that doesn't see it imagines the future and start to react to the future like it is real and it start to be scared of something that doesn't really exist means the mind is not either rooted in what exists in existence itself and it doesn't have the clarity this is a confused mind so a confused mind is ignorance ignorance has two aspects veiling and projection from this arise the samsara the birth and death veiling functions in two ways in the one we say it is not and in the other it does not shine forth so now here he breaks he says ignorance is from two aspects veiling and projection and now he breaks veiling itself what is really veiling is made from and then he will talk about projection we can stop for right now and we'll continue the next time